Good morning, it's Roger Gilbert here from the Rongo Rongo Live video studio uh, bringing a new story on our grain industry from Australia. Uh, I'm very proud to have Dr. Jared Greenville in the studio this morning, my time. Uh, he's the executive director of ABARAS, which is the Australian Bureau of Agriculture and Resource Economics and Science. Uh, we'll ask him a little bit about that. but. Uh, Jared, uh, Dr. Greenville, welcome. No, thank you. Thank you very much for having me along. Happy to be here. Yes, well, uh, we you're obviously on a different time zone to me. It's uh, late in getting late in your working day, and it's just the start of mine. Uh, however, uh, I understand from my colleague who represents the part of the world that Australia is expecting a uh, a big harvest this year, or this, ha yeah, this harvest. Yeah. Yeah. But that's right. So this, this coming year or this financial year, as we report the 2020-21 season, we're, sorry, the 21-22 season, uh, we're yeah. looking to have a, a really big big year. In fact, um, across agriculture, across all the suite of products that we grow, it's looking to be our biggest year ever on record. Um, and that follows up what was our biggest year on record previously last year. So we've had two really good seasons um, across across the country. And for this year, it's really been driven by uh, a comeback in our grains industry. Um, what we're seeing and what we haven't seen in the past very often is good conditions on the west coast of Australia and the east coast. And because Australia is such a large continent that we can often get you know, variable conditions, we'll get you know, really poor conditions in the east, but you know, okay conditions in the west or, or vice versa. But, seem to have come together at this point in time and we're seeing those good conditions across the country. Um, and that's also occurring at the same time as, as you'll be aware that international prices for a number of grains and also for meat products, are, it's really quite high. So those two factors are combining to be, you know, deliver a pretty good year for Australian farmers. Yeah, and uh, when you mentioned climatic conditions, I mean, is this an unusual situation where both climates seem to be the same through the growing season? Yeah, it's really quite unusual. Um, and to, to be honest, when we started this year back in March, when we, we do our forecast for the, the coming season, we, we weren't at all predicting that this would, would happen, this would play out. We, we had a good year last year, which you know rarely gets followed up by another good year. Um, around June, we the weather systems really started to shift and we started to move towards uh, uh, a La Nina type event in mm. on the eastern seaboard, which would then come come into fruition um, now over summer, but also on for the west, and we had a negative Indian Ocean dipole, which also delivered some some rain across the the whole southern part of the continent. So to have these two events come in, and on mm. the back of a La Nina last year, um, which really delivered you know pretty good conditions on the on the east coast, um, is not something that we see, and it's about a one in ten or one in twenty year event that we get these weather systems across the continent um, or across particularly the, the wheat sheep zones we call it here where you, you grow most of our, our grain um, and so this is a, a pretty good outcome or pretty you know pretty yeah. rare outcome really yeah so it's not only in tonnage terms but it's in value as well yeah that's right so when we look at the crops overall our winter crop which is our kind of dominant cropping system given where we are in the hemisphere um, we're looking to produce around 58.4 million tonnes of, of crop, and that's going to be our biggest ever wheat crop, our mm. biggest ever canola crop, our second ever biggest barley crop. And so they're our main, main winter crops. We're looking at some pretty good numbers for our summer crops um, and a return, you know, return of cotton production, um, a return of rice um, because our water storages are, are quite high. Um, and that's been coupled with you know, good prices for wheat, but records and record prices that we're seeing for canola. And so those factors are really driving what we're seeing in terms of the value then side. So high tonnage and, and high, mm. high value. And, and uh, with the harvest in mind, are all these crops harvested at once? And if so, uh, how do you see the harvest growing with the rec these record crops in terms of transportation, harvesting, transport stations? and storage. I mean, is there are there issues around those factors? 
It is a, a watch point to me. So we already had you know, a big crop last year, which is contributing to, I guess, some scarcity in in storage in particular. Um, despite the pandemic going on, Australia's really continued a pretty rapid pace of export. So we're still getting products out of the market. Um, we're also yeah. coming off the back of previous to these two seasons, really three poor seasons, and particularly on the eastern states, we had three years of root production declines and sometimes no no production at all in terms of our grain. So we really ran down our stocks to, to really low levels in that time. You know, two years ago, there was concerns that Australia was going to really run out of some of its stocks of wheat, particularly milling wheat, um, feed wheat also, and so forth. So we started with a position where we had capacity. Um, so far, we've managed to still export, but there is a lot of pressure on the internal logistics and supply chains to get this crop off and out. One of the things that we've noticed, because it's been quite cool as well, and we've got some flooding, particularly in New South Wales, is that the harvest is delayed um, and so that's also I guess helping with some of the logistics of what we're seeing um, in terms of getting that off and so we're still we're quite we're a bit behind it effectively of where we would otherwise be in terms of harvest at this time of year um, just because it's been fairly cool and, and wet. Mm. So when are you expecting the harvest to be complete? Well it should be starting to wrap up so the weather across most of eastern Australia started to, we got summer, you know, over yeah. just the last few weeks and we're getting, we're getting some higher temperatures back, which will help dry yeah. out some of the paddocks enough to get headers and so forth in. Um, we, we would otherwise expect most of New South Wales to be, be done by now, but there is something mm. to really ramp up now and that will go into Victoria. Queensland's been harvested and, and WA as well. Um, so we expect really in the next little while, next few weeks, Mm. much of the harvest will be complete. Mm. And unlike uh, possibly the UK, as it were, uh, and other countries that are experiencing difficulties with hauliers uh, through the pandemic, uh, what you're suggesting, what you're saying is the pandemic is having very little impact on, on the actual harvest and delivery of grain into storage. Yeah, so far, so far so good. Um, I don't necessarily want to jinx that because right at the yeah. moment there's been a bit of press and a bit of concern over a fuel additive for diesel um, vehicles. And so that's uh, the, the AdBlue additive, that's a pollution reduction. And many okay. of the modern diesel engines actually require it to run. So there's a bit of concern over the haulage sector there about whether they'll have enough. Mm. Um, government and the industry is trying to secure supplies. It's urea, which is the issue, which is you know, a global issue yeah. at the moment. So that's the main additive that goes into that. So, but so far, so good. Um, and we're hoping that, that that is more of a, a watch at the moment and the solution comes in time. And so that will hopefully mm. mean that the grain will get into storage. The other issue in storage, because there's a, a, I guess, much more informal storage or less secure storage at the moment, just given the size of the crop. Um, is that there's a risk that we had a mouse plague at the end of last year. Yes, the yes, cool we saw the weather mm. knocked those numbers way down, um, and also, as well as you know, pretty good pest control. But you know, some of the more less secure, particularly on farm storages and the like, are at risk of, of that can becoming an issue again as we go into into summer. Yeah, and uh, finally, um, I've got a question here about markets. Uh, how uh, how do you see uh, markets? Um, demand uh, developing. You might like to explain to us just a little bit about Aberas, because I know you're on the science side, etc. But of things, but uh, maybe you have a comment uh, around uh, markets. Yeah, so our, the bureau that, that I run um, here is, is really the research arm of the Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment. Um, so we're part of uh, the department and we've been doing work in both the economic side and sciences um, for the past 75 years. And so part of our role is to keep an eye on markets. Um, mm. Australia exports around 70% of what it produces. So international markets are really our, you know, our main market when it comes to, to understanding what's driving value for Australian agriculture. Um, where we're seeing markets go in some senses, well, uh, a bit uncharted territory for, for our our meat products. So we've had continued increase in, in value in, in, in meat products and initially kicked off by African swine fever in China. Mm -hmm. That's continuing on. Um, 
for grain markets, what we're really seeing is the both some disruption in terms of supplies and some of the, the main markets have say, made some big supplies out of, out of Europe, um, Ukraine and, and Russia, but also those dry conditions which are affecting North America and particularly Canada for canola. Um, so there's a bit of, I guess, uncertainty about the supply of milling wheat in particular and also canola and we've seen prices go quite high. Um, we're expecting that really to continue for the next little while um, into into next year. Um, of course, you know, understanding what's going to happen with the weather in Australia is hard enough, yet, let alone you know what's happening in, in the global scale. But you know, as production comes back in the next growing season, or at least maybe potentially returning to more average levels, some of those price pressures are likely to moderate. Um, we would expect we wouldn't expect prices to stay this high for, for too long. Um, and and then there's always that policy question as to you know what governments are doing around that mm -hmm. as well and you know as we saw you know in a few times in history that when prices go get high governments can sometimes get a bit you know concerned and yeah. will try to take policy actions that are ultimately generally counterproductive yeah. um, but that can cause prices to move rapidly and, and in uncertain ways. Mm. Excellent. Uh, just, well, thank you very much. Uh, you did mention, which I, I'd like to just um, ask about, you mentioned an environmental aspect to the work that the Bureau does. Um, is, is, is COP26 on your radar in terms of the industry's overall uh, global uh, footprint in carbon? I mean, is that an area that the, that the Bureau takes and pays attention to? Yes, it is, and it's certainly on our industry's radar as well. So, for as with many, I guess, agricultural nations, livestock emissions account for the bulk of our emission profile from, from agriculture. Um, our livestock industry has a target to be carbon neutral by 2030, and they've already undertaken a series of research and a number of investments that they're putting in to try and achieve that task. Um, across, we've done some work also looking at, I guess, Australia's relative emissions profile and shows that we really have, um, you know, in some, some areas a comparative advantage that we sit kind of middle of the pack in terms of our emissions profile. Um, we're a little bit higher than some of the major importing countries, um, but we're certainly a, a fair bit lower than some of the other major exporting countries. So with the industry's view of trying to use you know, their push towards uh, a carbon neutral product or a low carbon product. Um, I think that there's certainly, you know, scope for Australian agriculture to, to, to be, you know, uh, I guess there's a number of opportunities mm. regarding where they would go in, in a low carbon future. Yeah, no, very interesting. We should keep an eye on that. And uh, if you have any developments, yeah. uh, you're welcome to join us again. But uh, Dr. Grunveld, thank you very much for joining us from Australia this morning. No problem. Thanks very much for having me on. And um, yeah, all the best as well. Yeah, thank you. Bye for now.